you yeah, or but, something. Yeah, then, but you then don't, I don't want to have to do it. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. You want you want me to hear the crackpot theory. <laughs> it it is quite the crackpot theory. But if it makes sense, I can see it. I mean, the game's still not going to come out for at least three years, so. It is a crackpot theory, and right now, I don't see any holes in it. Feel free to poke holes in it. Because You know what? If there are holes to poke, I might poke them just to hear what you would come up with. <laughs> okay. All right, let's, let's hear the crackpot theory. Of why Mass Effect 2 and 3, Shepard has a child. Specifically a daughter, yes. Specifically a daughter, okay. Why specifically a daughter, first off? Why is that? I'll get to there. Oh, good. Well, and this theory works whether you pick male shepherd, female shepherd, whether you choose to romance anybody, do, and you don't choose to romance anybody, it doesn't matter. Mm hmm. Are you going to go into like go Shepard's into been cloned as a child? Well, we know Shepard had been cloned. Oh, yeah, we Shepherd know that from DLC during but... Mass Effect 2. Yeah. Yes. In Mass Effect 1, after the events of Theron, on Theron, I believe the planet's named Theron. It's the one where you get Liara. Oh, okay. So the. Where you save Liara from a prison trap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Essentially, Liara reveals that she knows nothing about humans. She's very young for a you know, fully grown Asari. Mm -hmm. And that she's very inexperienced in ways of dealing with other people. Hmm. Well, that's that's being kind, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, but she's inexperienced in dealing with people in any manner. Yeah. I mean, that's... she can barely hold a conversation because she's just, you know, she sticks her foot in her mouth by making a joke, making Shepard sound more like a specimen than a person. <laughs> it, oh, we love the specimens. Yes, I I love that piece of dialogue. It was wonderful. But before the conversation happens, when you first get Liara off the planet, you're sitting in the um, the kind of commander room mm -hmm. where you contact the council and everything. Yeah. And... Uh, At some point during that game, in that room after one of the missions, you have to merge your mind with Liara so Liara can tell you about Pharos. Mm -hmm. Well, that mind merge. All right. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hear there. So what you're saying is the fact that the mind meld during division or not division. Massa so what you're saying is the, the mandatory mind meld that has to happen at least once throughout Mass Effect 1. The mandatory one. Between Shepard and Liara. It has to happen. You can't complete the game without it. It's true. Because without that, your knowledge from the beacon, either incomplete or the correct beacon in the Krogan breeding facility is not passed to Liara because that's how she gets that information and realizes Pharos is where you need to go. Not Pharos. Ilos, that's it. Ilos. I apologize for using the wrong name there of the planet. Ilos. That you need to go to Ilos past the Mew Relay. Of course, we know we get the location of the Mew Relay from the uh, Novaria mission, but so no matter what order you do the missions in, you have to merge your mind with Liara at least once. And we know that that is how the Asari reproduce. 
I want to poke a hole in that. Like I want to, I want to poke a big giant hole. Okay. So, as as far as we know of the I'm not Asari, quite done yet, but go okay. ahead. You go know, ahead. I'm, I'm I'm gonna start poking holes yeah. right now. So, oh, that's as far as we know from the Asari physiology, is that Asari physiology states that yes, you have to mind, mind meld, so so to speak. We're going to use that word. It's not the correct term, but it is what we're going to use together to make child. Now, yes, Liara even states in the game that they can reproduce without ever touching the other person if they want to. Yes. It can be done that way. Physical all, contact is not necessary. It is not necessary. But here, here's 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 where I'm going to poke that hole. As far as I understand the Asari physiology, with spending, a, to, to be honest, a lot of time around the Asari species throughout the entire game, the Asari species Asari. to make child, it requires a conscious effort from the Asari side. Now, again, you're right. Liara is, to an extent, very naive, very young. As far as we know, she has never mind melded with anyone else. But it still requires a... Sort of, what I would think from the Asari point of view is a sort of not just conscious effort to collect the specific traits, but it also requires some form of, you know, key, let's call it hormone in, in their body to do that. Also, yes. she is, she is again, very young, but they kind of talk about with it all it takes they, they take specific traits now i don't think that she would be able to do that on the first try sure accidents happen but then again i i don't think that that would work right away it, I, well my counterpoint there is you know shepherd has no matter what you what shepherd you play good bad male, female, soldier, biotic, it doesn't matter. Shepard has this commanding presence to them. Yeah, no, that's... I mean, that's that's part of the thing that made Shepard so resistant to indoctrination. Mm -hmm. So, and we know, even if you don't go for Liara, or flirt with Liara, she's still interested in you. For the way she trips over her words as she talks to you, even in Mass Effect Two, when you come back, and yeah, you, you can uh, you, you can tell that those feelings were there, even if even if the player never acted on them. Okay, Liara cared for Shepard, so my argument is that yes, she accidentally copied genetic code. Or maybe on purpose. We don't know because Liara has a radical personality change between the first two games. It's very true. And I think part of that radical personality change is the fact of Shepard dying and then her figuring out that she's carrying an Asari child of Shepard's immediately after. But then two years later, Shepard comes back. And Liara seems like there's something she wants to say and isn't going to say it. She sounds like she's trying not to get too close to Shepard again. Even if you are pursuing a relationship with her. And yeah, you can only get that relationship back if you do the... If you did Shadow it the first game. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and Shadow yeah, Broker. And yeah. the Shadow Broker, yeah. <sighs> I I wanna I wanna I wanna poke holes. I do I do. But okay, what what you're saying absolutely makes a ton of sense. Now that you're saying it, I'm mean, like, you're right. And they, it, but she, and she and goes it doesn't from interfere with any, story. Story. It doesn't, it doesn't even touch interfere it. with any of the multiple story points that are different depending on how you play the game or choices you can make. I mean, sure, it would have yeah. would it have been? I mean, sure, if they if they went that route in Mass Effect Three. Oh my god, that would make so much sense of why Liara just comes like out of out of nowhere, out of left field and goes to Mars and starts doing this and starts researching the Protheans and what they did to kind of defend their the, the galaxy. That would yeah, make I mean she was obsessed with the Protheans anyway. Well yes, but she, but she like wasn't said, not to that extent. Go towards, she, why would she go towards their technology instead of their culture? 
Yeah, she was always about the culture. She was never about the technology. And the fact that she went to Earth and Admiral Hackett knows that she's the shadow broker. He he knows that right off the bat. Like, he specifically says it in Mass Effect 3. He's like, oh, it's nice to have yeah. the shadow broker nearby so we can get information. It's like, yeah. there's no way she yeah, would have told you that unless there was something hidden in there that only Admiral Hackett would know. And if she let slip that she's carrying Shepard's child or she carried Shepard's child, she would also let slip that she's protecting her, protecting the child because she's the shadow broker. So all the information that she would have that would be available saying that this is Shepard's child massively on lockdown. And, and shadow brokers like ability to lock shit down is on the, the highest tier that you can get. Like oh, yeah, it, no, it's no, all, not all even specters have access to that shit. And no, and oh my god, because you're you're right. The drastic change between what Liara does in Mass Effect One to Mass Effect Two, she goes from being naive uh, and like, like just going from being the naive person and socially uncultured and socially inept to cool, calm, and collected member of the Shadow Brokers army blows my mind and she would she, to, to protect the and child the shepherd when you walk when you walk into liara's office for the first time she's on the she's on the phone with somebody telling you know you get me this you do this or the next time we meet i will flay you alive with my mind but that is a strong that is, that is wild she, she might have change. oh yeah no and the fact that she is so viscerally violent with her words you would never see that from mass effect one liara you would see okay yeah she'd stumble over it and you know get violent yeah, because that 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 innate aggression did not exist in me one liara except for shepherd shepherd kind of had that innate i mean we're humans we're innately aggressive but we choose to be when we want to be yeah so and going back to you know this is a minor spoiler for people that didn't fully expand out mass effect 2 and 3 we do get to meet liara's uh father quote unquote quote, yes quote unquote yeah. father yes yeah no no and her father yeah, is father like is her blood. father is half krogan her father's father was a krogan yeah, but if you remember, her father actually was the bartender. Yes, from no, yes. Mass Effect and... Two on Ilium. <sighs> yeah, no, that I remember that because, oh my God, oh, so much. I as my my innate ability to poke holes and things. I want to poke a hole in this, but not. I, I can't. I can't find a specific spot other than. The, the beginning where you're like, yes, it was a mandatory yeah. mind meld. I mean, I could poke a hole there yeah. all I want. I mean, it, of, you know, of the Asari wouldn't have created a child because she wasn't trying to. I, I still I but, still want to say that creating Asari children, they, it requires a form of conscious effort um, because humans are the same way. I mean, if you don't want to have a child, your body and mind can kind of work together to an extent to make that happen. Sure, accidents still happen, but again, it's kind of a conscious effort. Oh, I want to poke holes, but... I have I... another thing to... I, I, I do have another piece of evidence that would support it being an accident and happening on accident. All right, let's hear the accident. Let's hear it. Let's hear that. We know Liara's mind at the beginning of Mass Effect 1, before you bring her on board, is fragile. And powerful. And powerful. Because not only is her mother one of the most powerful matriarchs <sighs> the Asari have ever seen. Venezia. I if you leave the the uh, Theron mission again, if I'm getting that wrong, I apologize. But if you leave Liara's recruitment mission for last, when you get there, her mind she's been on her own for so long that her mind has kind of broken a little, and she thinks you're a hallucination. 
It mm. ref actually refuses to believe you're real until you fire the mining laser to tunnel through. So we know that she, her mind can go that far and was on its way. And when you get onto the ship, Caden asks her, when's the last time you ate or slept? Dr. Chakwa should have a look at you. Ah. Uh. So that is another thing to say that her mind might not have been in a position to stop it from happening if she did peer into Shepard's mind and that thought of having the child popped in there even for a half second that she'd be able to stop it. Oh, man, so much, <laughs> so much that I want. I, again, it's my, such a wild theory, but there's so much to support it. There's so much logical sense to that. I mean, also, we know that she is innately powerful as well because her mind is innately powerful because, again, Matriarch Benezia through the fight, if you go and get her before you go and fight Matriarch Benezia, the matriarch, matriarch freezes you, puts you, puts your entire crew and your your entire squad here in stasis for a split second yeah. while the enemies roll in. All of a sudden, you are now out of it. If and you have to, and as far as I know, you have to bring Liara. Or no, you don't. No, you. No, you don't. You do not have to bring Liara to that mission, but you have to bring Liara on board the ship and have that mind meld encounter. It is required. You cannot beat the game without it. Yeah. Because she kind of, with the power of her mind and yours, and, and Shepard's mind, they kind of are able to piece together the happenings, so to speak. Uh, not enough to make sense of the pictures, but enough to make sense of the feeling that the, the beacons convey. Yeah, because Shepard can get the information of the Mu Relay is needed. Okay, we need to go through the Mu Relay. We can, you know, we can do all of it. We can literally save Liara's mission for the second to last mission of the game if we want to. And even do the uh, manual death choice mission at the Krogan breeding facility of Sarens. We can do that mission before Liara as well if we choose. But we have to get Liara to finish the game. She has to be on board, and we have to have that mind connection to figure out that Ilos is where we need to go. Oh, man. You are just... That that theory has way too much merit. And again, from, from two people that have both played the shit out of Mass Effect series in general. Yeah. I mean, there's people that have played it more than us, but... Oh, yeah, for sure, but they may oh, not have absolutely. Delved, delved, delved as deeply into this. I mean, I, I have, for, for, for me, yeah. I have the logical mind to accept things. If if they are explained correctly, I have the logical mind to accept that this is... You, you're right, there there is a, a... Not just a massive plot hole, but you can you can stick that into the plot and be like, yeah, this is what happened, and extend that canon just a little bit farther, but... Oh, my God... Also, there's the idea of Morinth. Well... Y you remember Morinth from 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, Samara so Shao. Yeah, Arnad yeah. Yakshi, yep. Well, we know that the ability to meld minds can mutate with the Ardak Yachi. Yeah, but... What's the... to say it, it can't mutate the other way and make them more susceptible? Well, instead of killing their partner, they're more susceptible. Kind of like to, a, kind of like yeah. a, 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 su a sub theory, like yeah, it, yeah, it's like a sub theory that could go on that. What's to <sighs> say that there's an, that there's no mutation that makes them more susceptible towards carrying the child or or commanding presences, like uh, yeah, because Commander Shepard throughout the entire series has this like you're right, commanding or commanding presence. Again, it's Commander Shepard. Every time I choose it, I go with the Hero of the Skillion Blitz, which means that you held off a band of Batarian slavers, which, by the way, Batarians, for anyone that is unaware of this, Batarians are slavers. They don't come by just a ship of one. They usually come by a ship of, like, two or three ships, and it's not just 12 or 20 people. It's a lot. Yeah, and the three options you're given for Shepard are War Hero, which is, you know, Survivor of the Skillion Blitz, 
Soul Survivor, which is single-handedly surviving a Thresher Maw attack, which... And taking an hour, know, if I remember right. Yeah. Or um, Ruthless, which still gives Shepard... It doesn't give Shepard a, you know, survive at any cost, no matter, you know... It gives Shepard a, you know, we'll blow a planet up to make sure a bad guy doesn't get off of it kind of mentality. Which is still a commanding presence. It's just in the opposite direction. The willingness to get the job done at the cost of many. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Generally, people only pick that option when going with a renegade shepherd. But... It could theoretically be done in a paragon manner. And it still carries a lot of weight. It doesn't carry as much without the renegade aspect, but it still carries weight. There, there is so much to that theory, and you know, oh. uh, here's the other thing. I'm going to add to that theory. Okay. So throughout Mass Effect Three, for those of everybody that's never played it, and those of you that are no, unaware, throughout Mass Effect Three, you see it, the catalyst, so to speak. Perceive being per yeah. yes as a as a child as a human child on Earth when Shepard is escaping, is Shepard's mind still can well again still connected to a certain extent through Liara even over long distances? Sure, Shepard technically died once, but the may the brain was revitalized and added cybernetic components, which could in theory in theory increase. The brain's brain capabilities, because really. humans only use about five percent of their brain. Add cybernetic enhancements to it. Oh yeah, that would open up more. Oh yeah, that would open way more. So, and and I'm pretty sure based on biotic abilities with uh, Ezo, the brain of a human using biotic abilities could theoretically increase the brain's power by maybe 10 percent. so we would have maybe 15 percent. let's just let's just call that i mean i'm not sure what the Actually, numbers would be canonically ezo does enhance the brain's processing capability to allow it to go past its five to ten percent so essentially we're going to say like 15. it does increase that yeah canonically it does increase that and that is what allows the use of biotic powers and in Asari humans. do like what they they have like because they're the most powerful. Asari, Asari are the only race that can use biotics without an amp or element zero exposure, because they just naturally have more of their brain on at at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Humans need the amp. Everybody else needs the amp. Mm hmm. Well. Anyway, As Asaris are known to use biotic amps to make their biotics more powerful, but they can use biotics to some extent without them. Yeah, it's, yes. it also makes it easier. Yeah. Okay, so oh. I mean, throughout the the Mass Effect three, I mean, you see the catalyst show up with a child as a child instead mm -hmm. of a human adult. You don't see it as any other species. It is a human child at the age of let's call it six years old. It's a bit. Looks about right. So, so I'd say it's closer to about ten, but yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's yeah, not in the teenage years. Definitely yeah. preteen. Not not teenage years yet. So maybe we could add on to that theory as saying that Shepard's mind is connected to Liaris to, to some small extent and knows about the child subconsciously as a result, produces child as the catalyst and because it doesn't change into that form at the end. Mm -hmm. it, it literally my looks like that. theory hole there, my poking the theory hole there, uh, re we've reversed the tables here. Yes, yes. <laughs> is the child has to be female. The catalyst is clearly a boy. No, it's not. The, 10, 10 and 12, it, it, 10 years old, preteens, you don't, breast do not start forming it. So they're still flat. No, and you can I, still I dress that. it up as a. You can. I'm gonna counter that because you, you could still. The mannerisms of the child. The way you could the be child, a tomboy. The way the child speaks, I believe, in the final conversation with the child, when you ask the catalyst why that form was chosen, he specifically states that it was 
that he chose a a male human child. I believe in that conversation at some point the catalyst does state that that form is male. I don't know. I might have to go back and look that up. I'm because... not definitely gonna have to go back and play through it again. But yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and look at mine too. I'm not certain on that, I, but I do believe. I, I want to say it that is stated he, that the catalyst is male. He never, somewhere. he never states because. It, it, because it shows a human form it, it doesn't it, it doesn't really understand i'm pretty sure between male and female i mean it's sure it's the catalyst it's the citadel it's seen males and females on the citadel it's the ai involved so it should know the difference between male and female but it doesn't need to choose it just needs to it chose a child because it's the one thing that if you choose an adult, let's just let's just make this a psychological question now. If you choose an adult, for the most part, adults won't always believe other adults. You choose a child, child's children are ultimately more believable. They don't know how to tell lies. Well, not really. Yeah, not they're they're very they're blunt. Taught. They're not subtle, yeah. and it probably chose child and that. But again, here's the other thing with that. You see the child catalyst way before it chooses that form when you see it at the end of the game. And the Citadel is how far away from Earth? And you still see it getting onto a stealth Kodiak on Earth? No one seems to notice the child. No one seems to see the child except for Shepard. Yeah. Because like, there were there were U.S., you know... The, the, I forget the name of the yeah the military the the marines the, the space navy marines I forget their name but alliance yeah it, they the alliance thank you the alliance yes. marines would have helped a child up onto that shuttle had yes. they seen it yes and he ran it. right by one two granted that one had well I was talking about the one that was guarding the shuttle door the one that stayed on the ground and gave the shuttle the tap. But there's also one inside the shuttle. Yeah. He would have definitely have seen the child because he's standing there. Something. Yeah. No one else saw the child. No one helped the child. So, again, that's, I'm, I'm adding on to your theory. And I mean, I know you're going to poke holes, but it, it still it makes sense because no one else saw the child. I mean, sure, it, if it was an Asari child, it wouldn't be Asari. But Shepard's mind is connected. Subconsciously, it would choose human. I mean, <sighs> It, and, and the whole thing just kind of goes into that spiral. I mean, like, you don't see that no one sees the child. The, the Citadel is how far away it can't project a let's call it a holographic site into Shepard's mind from that far away. I mean, theoretically, is it possible? Absolutely. The Citadel is one giant machine and it has more power than any other ship or fleet or anything in the entire galaxy. But. but why would it choose why would it choose again shepherd of all people to instill a child i mean sure shepherd gets there shepherd has time and time and time again overcome the odds of insurmountable issues taking out the collectors taking out uh well, harbinger taking out the first reaper i mean it whole thing yeah also here, here we're gonna we're gonna kind of diverge from the child theory. So Sovereign, we we all we all know that Sovereign actually did attach itself to the Citadel to activate the key of the deep hole wormhole generator, whatever you want to call it, to dark space. Alliance comes through, destroys it, but technically the Sovereign was still connected to the Citadel's AI. And could somehow of the connections, some of Sovereign's code and whatnot, knowledge base, kind of transferred into the AI, causing the catalyst itself to mutate, giving it the more options that it had other than just destroy. That is a possibility. Because and that would actually I, lean into the indoctrination theory a little. No, because it, it the Citadel doesn't have that power to indoctrinate. Sure, could some of the code have gotten in there, but then again, Reapers were made. But that's not the indoctrination theory. The indoctrination theory is that Shepard's mind, due to Shepard's constant 
exposure to Reaper and Reaper tech because, you know, you've got Sovereign in the first game. And a few of the indoctrination probes, you find colonies sputtered around that have been turned into husks. On top of all of that in the first game, that continues in the second game, and you get the Reaper IFF. And in the third game, you are constantly surrounded by uh, Reaper tech. Oh, and not to mention in the DLC, which is canon because which is a hundred percent canon because it is mentioned at the beginning of the third game the dlc for the second game where you destroy the batarian homeworld mm -hmm. to prevent them from getting access to there war. was a a reaper device there and shepherd was unconscious next to this device for a long time yeah so the indoctrination theory is that Shepard is actually on the verge of indoctrination through the entirety of the third game. And that the reason why Shepard is seeing the catalyst is because of the indoctrination. And that that is why the catalyst chose that form is because of the child he saw in the vent. Whether it was a hallucination or, or there's not. actually a child there we don't know because Anderson never commented on it. So we would assume it was a hallucination that he saw a child. But that would fit into your Liara connection theory. But that's the indoctrination theory is that Shepard was indoctrinated and that that section on in the third game with the optional boss fight of and I say optional because you can skip it through dialogue and cho and it's only a option a boss fight if you ch ended the second game with the renegade option but the optional boss fight of the elusive man and the death of anderson and um choosing destruction as the canonical ending this is again in the indoctrination theory i'm not saying that is the you know canonical ending but well, to the theory well, to the theory it is after that if you have the extended cut of the ending you see the same flash of light on the screen as when shepherd was hit by the reaper beam while approaching the conduit teleporter up to the citadel with anderson you see the same flash of light in the exact same pattern as when that beam hit and then the camera shows shepherd shepherd's armor lying on the rubble on earth at the foot of that um transport beam and, and takes a breath you, you see shepherd take a breath so that would play into that as well if that is the canonical ending and the others were just, you know, like a thank you to the fans for dealing with the crazy development that the third game was in and the fact that it was almost canceled due to that development crisis, which would have been terrible. But that was not the originally planned ending. To the game, which is why they released the DLC to expand that, on the ending the, that they I thought had that, to go with. I thought the DLC was supposed to be the actual ending that they had and planned, but again, didn't it, have time it, to finish. It both, it both, it, it both was and wasn't because yes, that is generally what they had planned on doing, but it also is not because they had to make a few slight changes to the ending when they couldn't get the full ending out with the original version of the game. So they kind of had to retcon those into the additions. You know, I'm hoping, I mean, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like absolutely honest with this. 
one of the things that I'm hoping for for the new Mass Effect. I mean, we've, we I've seen the trailer already, so yeah. So, well, it's it's a teaser, but well, yes, it's like but, a, it's like ten seconds. <laughs> but still, I am I'm, I'm again I'm massively massively hopeful that I don't I don't know if this is entirely true right now, but I'm hoping that. I don't. I, do you know if Bioware is still owned by EA or is like a massive? Bioware system? is still is it, still an EA um, extension. Yes. Okay. I am again massively hopeful. EA don't fuck us on this. Does not step in and says no. Start over like they did with Andromeda. Because Andromeda had so much potential. It Everybody's did. like, oh, Andromeda was a terrible game. I don't see it that way. I never saw it that way. I mean, sure, in the beginning, yeah. when I started playing, I played it since day one. I saw, and you and me both played it, day one. Yeah, the first two hours of that game is amazing. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's also a huge mess. And I think, and this, is, this was the biggest problem. I knew this kind of going into the game as well, to a certain extent, that... Uh, Bioware, working on the game 10 years, 12 years down the line after Mass Effect 3, even before Mass Effect 3 was released, they were working on Andromeda uh, for, at first it was more of an idea more of a, a, a point saying hey, we're going to go to a new section kind of do this all over biggest issue I had was they got, it was what, 7 years into development, 8 years in development actually towards the end they're like here we're going to do this they released the first kind of teaser trailer saying hey there'll be thousands of planets to explore you'll be able to go into this massive open world kind of galaxy and then that, and then, that was the original plan that was the original plan and that was what was completed too like they had that all already set up and ready to go first they, and then they were working on what planets were kind of making story points where you would have to go what was yeah. on these planets they get almost done and ea and again i'm sorry ea i just dislike this business plan and business move of yours i'm not saying you're a terrible company i'm saying that you made a poor choice and it backfired said on you. make it more make it more action based and start over yeah pretty much and it's and like you're you, still on the same release timetable yeah and it's like it's like you cannot say oh hey yeah you're on the same release timetable start over you can't do that because I, I know EA also makes their own games. That's not the point here. The point is that they kind of stepped in, made poor choices. They did the same thing, I think, with Dragon Age 2 as well, which was the reason why that they they had in Dragon Age 2 a whole bunch of reused maps. It, it just, was a whole bunch of reused maps. You could only play as humans. And there was a massive jump. Just like Mass Effect, from Mass Effect 1 to 2, EA did not own Bioware when they made Mass Effect 1 and Dragon Age Origins. Yes. They did obtain Bioware. During those two is, development it, periods. Dur during the two development periods of Mass Effect 2 and Dragon Age 2, which is why they took such a hard jump from RPG to shooter with RPG elements. Did they did they make the right choice with Mass Effect? Absolutely. I think what they did kind of set the tone for... See, I think yes and no. With... I, I, I like the flow of Mass Effect 2 and 3. I really do. How they connect. How they connect it. Well, I was talking about the way the game plays. The shooting, the cover, everything. Like, it just... It does flow better better it's got it it plays a little easier and I get okay that. yeah no i i see that because i remember in mass effect one getting into cover oh my god there were so many issues with that even today like just playing it right now i mean it, it yeah. would it would have so many issues just trying to get into cover because it'd be like oh yeah here you're you're behind cover you still get shot by something even though you're behind cover nothing happens but you still die yeah which but, is what made the insanity playthrough so difficult. Oh my god! One, but we're I'm, not going there. We're, I'm not, we're not going I'm not, there. Right I'm now. not touching that one because I did not no, play insanity because no, I knew better. I, I I attempted it multiple times and can never get a full complete game completion. I know everybody's gonna say, "Well, you know, get good," but no. And so yeah. you know, you know, it, I'm gonna say it, this for every every viewer or people that listen to this. 
I'm going to say this right now. If you have not touched Mass Effect Insanity Level after playing the game once, even though you know what you're supposed to do, you know what? Take Call of Duty, put it on steroids on their in most hardest difficulty, and fuck off. Like, really, just just get out. Yeah. Because that it, thing it is just not stupid. Care. It's like taking... Yeah, it's like, okay... For, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this insanity, absolutely. The hardest parts of the game or of the games aren't the boss fights. No, it's the, the hardest dumb parts of the game mobs. are the guest armatures, the four legged. Oh guest my armors. god, those guys killed the, me! Like, on the, fight, the oh. ones you have, the ones you're required to fight on foot. On foot, those are the. Oh, those guys are big fuck yous. The, game. the one, the one armature I absolutely <laughs> despised with the hottest white action that i could ever amount to like it literally made me want to break right my controller you, it, it's the one right before you go into the get to the perkian ruins to get liara to right? an extent yes it's that planet with the rocks with the red rocks and you're going through and you're just kind of and you get you have to get out of your 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 kodiak your mako your mako sorry yeah fucking and you just you you have to get out and fight that bitch on foot and there is there's those <laughs> snipers jumping the fuck around. I understand it is massively chaotic. I think I died 15 times. I said, no, I'm done for the day. Walked away, came back to it a week later. Still took me eight tries to do on normal difficulty, mind you. Yeah. And I about lost it. Once I passed that, once I did it, I saved immediately right there. Like I was not playing. Yeah, I, in the original version of the game, the 360 edition of Mass Effect One, I never beat, I never got past that on Insanity. I, I tried and tried, but on Insanity, I never got past that point. Even at a max, even that. max level character. Well, that's the thing. The Insanity achievement was bugged on the original game, sure, and you sure. couldn't get it on a new game plus. You could only get the Insanity achievement if you started a new file at level one. On insanity, it never touched the difficulty. Well, here's the thing with that. Here, here, even if you beat, even if you went to the final boss, I even tried this. Go leveling up to max level, going to the final boss of Saren, putting the game on insanity before that boss, beating the game, and then I played back through the game on insanity all the way through, and it would not give me the achievement. That achievement was bugged. You had to have a fresh file to get it. Okay. Well, I mean, it like, may have been on purpose, but that's the way it worked. For some reason, the hardcore, <sighs> the the you know hard difficulty didn't do that. You could play through on normal and then reset the difficulty before starting the game back up, and it would give you the third difficulty level achievement. But you couldn't get number four, insanity, without a fresh save. Man, that just. Mm -hmm. That that okay that that armature I, I I think I think the 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 collective player base will understand what we're talking about that that have played that game hardcore diehard fans you all understand that armature literally was the worst thing you'd ever have to face I, I don't care bosses they're fine that armature fuck you yeah that and that armature I, was nasty and I'm talking about bosses I'm talking about bosses mobs across every mass effect game that armature fuck you i'd like, rather face a thousand <laughs> halo 2 legendary editions jackal i spikers. would rather i would rather <laughs> face oh my god no yeah no i i, I go with you on that one i would rather Dude, the, go through the, lso i'd rather go through the entire halo edition the entire game i'm talking from fresh halo one yeah, all I, the way through and do legendary edition through the entire thing i'd rather do that and face that armature on insanity. I'd rather shoot myself in the foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that armature, oh my God. Like you had to, because there was no cover. You had a little spot of cover on both sides. Enough for your three, that, that for the three of you on your squad to hide. And, and your, your squad and your cover is was stupid. Yeah, and your cover was destructible. If you took enough damage, it dropped. It was a crate. Oh my god! There, and there was another one a little farther, that but it shot it a couple times. Yeah. There was there was one a little farther that was indestructible. Like the, there were two spots that were indestructible. One, your 
one of yeah. your squad would sit at the other one would sit at that one and they kind of switch back and forth getting knocked down repeatedly because they don't know where the fuck to stand but you see i, I always told them where to stand i did too but I, they I, still I, moved I left on the d-pad right on the d-pad and they, I, they still move for me no matter what i did me. but maybe it's just a play style difference or something i i confused the ai less than you but yeah i, I didn't have an issue with the ai in that fight yeah, no, it's, Just it was the difficulty of the fight. Man, there was there was so much chaos happening in that one section of the game, fight wise, across all of them. Like that is that oh, yeah. was an, a new level of chaos that, it, and that's that's like that's like saying Dragon Age, like putting the end of the game of Dragon Age Origin on that level of chaos and just leveling it up. Oh my and god! Having it in a game that is recommend and having it in a mission that is recommended that you do first. Yes. No, it's, Oh my God. I just, I just, I, I just severely dislike that, that map, that map and that, that mission can go fuck itself. I'm sorry. I mean, I love Liara. I love, I love her to death. I'm sorry. That armor yeah. can go fuck itself. <laughs> like I, I do not care. Therum. That's the name of the planet. Therum. To me. Therum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well. T h e r u m. Therum. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, it's a Mass Effect universe. There's so much that we can like put in there ourselves that we, as as the player base, as the community, can come together and all agree on. And if if we all agree on certain things, Bioware might grace us with their presence and say, "Yeah, no, okay, we'll do that." But. but. It, it, oh, really, it really kind of I'm, stands I'm to gonna say something. I want to say something very, like, it, it, it's going to instantly lose me a lot of respect with whoever's listening. Oh, let's hear it. I love the lore of Andromeda. My oh, no, yeah, issue, no, absolutely. No, my, my, my main issue with Andromeda was the fact that um, the main character, whether you pick male, female, you know, writer. Mm-hmm had no didn't have that presence that Shepard had and you could say yeah but n n no the character would get talked over and your commanding decisions in the wheel of I'm taking command and doing this didn't have the presence of the previous Mass Effect games and that's what lost me there but when it comes to the lore I only have one issue with the lore with all the lore in Andromeda. Ooh. I have one issue with it. Let's and it's it. very minor. After you get the base, the space base set up, I can't remember the, the Nexus, that's it. The Nexus. No. After you no. get the Nexus set up, you get the opportunity to go in and tell the game, yes, I had a female shepherd, I had a male shepherd, blah, 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 you know. And it puts it in hol and it puts holograms of Shepard and everything. The Andromeda team, all of the you know habitats that went out that left, mm -hmm. the big cab ships. I can't remember what they were called, but those ships left. Arcs. 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 Yes, thank you. The arcs left after the Battle of the Citadel, right? Okay. And before Shepard's resurrection. Mm-hmm. But it was after the Battle of Citadel and after Shepard's um, ship got shot down. They like left in that two-year span. Or Shepard was being brought back by... Um, Cerberus. Cer Cerberus. And... There oh. is a, a hologram in there. It shows the Normandy SR2. And my issue with that is Ooh. they would not even know oh. what that looks like yet. Yes, it was being built by Cerberus while Shepard was being rebuilt. Okay. I could, but I could... Cerberus would have kept that hush hush. There's no way they would have a physical hologram of what that ship is going to look like when it's finished. Before the Cerberus actually got Shepard behind the wheel of it, 
or in command of it. There's no way that was getting out there. That's my only issue with it, is that that hologram exists. And I know it's just a reference oh. and an homage to Mass Effect 2 and 3, but it should not be there. Okay, you Other know what? Other than that, I absolutely love the whole uh, lore. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, I'm going I'm I'm to bring into that. I'm going to counterpoint that. Counterpoint that. Okay. So, so how can this hologram exist? How can this hologram when they exist? Left before it existed. Okay. All right. So, so they leave, right? Yep. And they're all in stasis, stasis because it's mm -hmm. uh, what a uh, two hundred year journey year at journey. whatever. Six hundred, but yeah. Okay, six hundred years. Six hundred years. Yeah. There could have been an option because it's six hundred years in the future, mind you. They might yeah, have the technology, have even, technology with the even with destruction as being even with destruction being canon and they have to start up from scratch. They could have made they the technology made the to technology send to the communication, communication over that long distance, that long distance and kind of try to reach uh, out because they, they know they're gone. They, they know they're gone. The Shadow Broker, the Shadow Broker was involved in creating the arcs. Creating we already know that because they are as involved because she her voice kind of shows up talking about it. In, on, on the next on, on the next yeah so i mean so, and we find out that liara even before she became shadow broker liara was the private funder one of them one of them they were they she was the prime most she was the primary private funder for jack Ryder and yes. this this mission Yes. Again, that's what I'm saying. There. They they could be they could have made the technology to send it that far, and it would just and sat on the computer until someone activated it, the communications array, downloaded all the information, and it just updated. Okay, my issue with that is yes, absolutely, that technology could have been developed in the 600 year span after they left the Milky Way. We also don't know, well, how, long don't know how long they sat in sat space in before stasis woke them up, even 600 oh, years, years, and they got there. They got there. There was no there was saying, no there was no saying, no hey, yeah, no, we've been asleep yeah, for 600 years. Yeah, because they were knocked off course by, yes. the, by the mist or whatever it was. Whatever that red energy was, I mean, like. Yeah, it, whatever the energy in, and was. It knocked the computer out. It, it knocked the computer out. My then. counterpoint is, if they had the technology to send that, why was that the only piece that was sent? Because they had no knowledge of the actual Reaper invasion in Mass Effect 3. They had no knowledge of the events of Mass Effect 2 or 3. The only piece they had was the hologram of the Normandy SR2. Like I said, I get that it's an homage to the sequel games, but... It minute. shouldn't be there, and it bugs me. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. More wait than minute. It, way wait more than it should. Be. I, I have. Okay, I have a counterpoint to that. So, so in Mass Effect three, we have Liara come Liara into come your into cabin your to cabin. create kind of a time capsule. She might yes, have sent the information, sent the information from, that. from that, and it just the only thing that show that, that they show that they is show. the homage to the SR two Commander Shepard. Because we all knew because that all Andromeda knew that was supposed Andromeda to be a new storyline. Story they didn't want really didn't to have it really to have it anything connected to Shepard from Mass Effect, Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect. Mass Effect. So, so they put it up there as, up an there as an homage, Shepard and the SR2. That's it. And a little bit of information, bit from, of information Liara. from Liara. Yeah. That that's where because she she might have done that. There is Liara mentioned that in this capsule, she was putting the blueprints for the crucible in case they fail, so the next cycle can do it can yes. succeed. Yeah. They didn't have that. There was no talk about the about the Crucible or the Return of the Reapers. The Mass Effect Andromeda team, all of it, I say team, the, you know, all of the Ark inhabitants and everybody that went to the Andromeda galaxy, mm -hmm. firmly believe that the Reaper threat stopped with Sovereign because they left immediately after. Not immediately, a few months later, but yeah. they left after that. 
and they specifically state in the game that 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 as far as their knowledge that was the end of the reaper invasion remember they also got knocked off course though though. yes but if they even if they received a communication of liara's little box she made things could have been lost they would have no they would have knowledge of the crucible and the full reaper invasion maybe but remember i mean but, uh, with, with the techno i mean sure we could still, sure, go, with the, still the, go with the, the, the technology saying hey they were able to send a message that far but but the technology they, the were, technology working they were working with may not have been able to receive the whole receive message the whole or the whole like canonical history, history. and, and they were also they knocked also off course, off course damage to certain damage systems. To systems. So things might have been lost when they were I mean, rebuilding. So again, it's, I mean, it's that, technology. That could be a thing, but that's a bit lazy of an answer. I mean, <laughs> hey, it's an answer. <laughs> it might be lazy, might but be we, lazy, know it's but true. we know it's true. Technology yeah. is technology not infallible. Is not infallible. No, and when you start upgrading technology, you start losing compatibility with old tech types. Yes. And, and codes. So, so, yeah. I mean, I get that. Uh, but, oh my god, still, Andromeda, Andromeda could, have, could have been so much more. I, I The one thing... The one thing uh, oh my god, that was, god such, that was such, such a clusterfuck. Such a clusterfuck. And I've, I've and talked about I've this talked a lot, lot about how, about how screwed Bioware got. Bioware got. Mm-hmm. Because, because at the end of the game, the release of the game, before they even, before they even released any DLC, DLC. You, you literally have literally an have excerpt, from, excerpt a from a computer at the end that says, that we, says are the Quarian, we are the Quarian... Uh, like Quarian Volus yeah. and and like and, and Mayday the Mayday Quarian Mayday. Elcor Volus arc, and they were running a Mayday, and it's just like I don't know if Bioware kind of came up and said, "Hey, yeah, no, this this is going on for this. We have this in there," and they still would have said, "No, we don't care. There's such bad reviews." Here's the thing with the bad reviews, and it backfired not on Bioware to an extent, certainly because they could have been they could have still done it the way they wanted it, but at the same time, they're under contract, they can't really they 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 ended up just DLC updates into multiplayer. multiplayer. Oh my god, that that where where we got characters that really irked me because it's like oh you're still going to make multiplayer dlcs that are practically done and they just need final touches but dlc that is also story based if you had just finished that one core in one i would have been fine because it would have been like it would have been like okay there end yeah it was that as far as i know it was EA that pulled the plug on it was. It was. the story DLC. They they had it planned. They had the early work done, the groundwork laid, mm-hmm. and it just EA said the game flopped too hard. And then EA gave that team a new project, which was forced on them, and it flopped even harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You remember what the follow up project for that team of people was, don't you? Anthem. 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 Yes. <sighs> That was that oh my was god! So much, so much freaking raw potential. Oh yeah, no that that game. Oh my god! If they, ooh, there was so much was raw. So the, much, you're right. There is so, right, so much raw potential raw, in that game. In that, yeah, the javelin suits were really cool. Oh yeah, no. The game just fell a little short in every aspect level of de- in every aspect of design. It didn't really fall massively short in any anywhere. It fell a little short everywhere. I think what ultimately was the downfall of Anthem. Anthem. What kicked everything off was the was server connection the server. issues. Yeah. And that made the and game made absolutely, absolutely unplayable. unplayable. Un- Did not matter. Did not matter. Server connection issues has recently killed another game. That came out. Oh, I say recently. It was a few months ago. Um, 
we got the launch of Dragon Ball The Breakers, which was supposed to be like a side game to Xenoverse 2. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be kind of like, you know, Dying Light style, but Dragon Ball. And it was so cool. It, it was a really cool idea where somebody plays as Frieza or Cell or, you know, Majin Buu. And then you've got seven other players playing playing human, or, you know, custom-made survivors. And they're surviving and trying to build enough power to get back or to stand up to you. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful design. But the game has all but died now. They're still supporting it, but nobody really plays it because they refuse. For some reason, Bandai refu refuses to open the game up, not cross-platform. They refuse to open it up to cross-region matchmaking. So you can only play the game with people playing on your con on your version, your console version, or PC, and in your region. You can't connect with somebody across the country in random matchmaking. You can do it in private lobbies, but not random matchmaking. And that's what killed the game for me, is the fact that I would go day one. I, la I launched that game the day it came out. And I was sitting in match online matchmaking queues for an hour before finding a game. Oh, man. And people went on the forums and complained. <laughs> That's Bandai. And I mean, Bandai Namco just refused to f to open that co that piece of the code up. It's, it's like they wanted the game to fail. Well, here's the other so, thing. I mean, we, you know, we've been off topic. Forget Bandai. We're back to EA. What we were talking about, <laughs> EA and okay. Andromeda. Hold on, hold on. Before we step over and back over to our, our favorite choice of words, <laughs> Bandai Bandai Namco, as far as I know, is a Japanese-based game or company, yeah. right? So, yeah. So, as far as Bandai is concerned, Japan comes first. Yeah, there, are I mean, more, there are more players, there are more players in, Japan in Japan who are going to be playing that game where they can actually do stuff. So, actually, uh, the previous Dragon Ball games that have been coming out, Kakarot, you know, um, that uh, fighter, Dragon Ball the Fighters, had better response in America than other countries? A much better response. And you can say, oh, well, that's just because, you know, America's population is 10 times that of Japan's. No. When you break it down geographically and you compare Tokyo to New York, it still sold better in New York than it did Tokyo. Like, it, it was selling better in the West, out in the West. So, yes, Japan will always come first to Japan companies. I mean, I get that. It's, you know, honor, tradition, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Japan. It's their culture. And I get that. I respect it. But they're not stupid. They know that America loves their Dragon Ball. And we really do over here. Yes. Yes, we do. We and love Japanese-based Japanese anime. Based anime. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't know why it was in their head that... We would rather sit in matchmaking for an hour than play with someone who doesn't live in the same region as us. Not even same country. Oh. Like, yeah, if then... I'm sitting in North Carolina, I can't play with somebody sitting in Texas. So it was blocked by, like, time zone. Not really time zone, more like region, southeast northeast you know midwest stuff so like not, that so not even time zone they're just like here four yeah corners of this the area States. can play this area can play this area can play but not with each other that that you know if, if they did like here united states as a whole region but yeah. it you yeah, know maybe it's because of the servers they didn't yeah. have enough servers based here in america that at the time they ran off the xenoverse they ran off the xenoverse 2 servers See, that's where the issue lies. They couldn't update those Xenoverse, servers. Two, Xenoverse 2 is not region locked in its matchmaking. Okay, I, I never played the Dragon Ball, you so can, I'm just... You can go into Xenoverse 2 
and go do a time patrol mission and tell it, open it up to where anybody can join and have a Chinese person or a Korean person or Japanese or Russian or British person pop into the lobby and play the game. And yeah, you can't speak to them if they don't speak your language, but there's the um, the in-game chat system that auto-translates, so you can still communicate. And so it, even if they try to say, well, that was the issue of communication, the communication was already there built into that server and the game code because it runs off the same base code as Universe 2. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tap out on that one because, you know, I, I don't know clearly enough about the Dragon Ball Z uh, games because, again, I'm not into the big fighting games. So do I play them? Sure. But I'm not into most of the big fighting games. I, I like to dabble at them, but sure, sure, sure. In, in my opinion, and this is going to piss a lot of people off, in sure. my opinion, the only fighting game worth being good at playing is Dead or Alive. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna piss off a lot of people. The the, the <laughs> whole series or just a specific one? No, just period. Just period? Okay. Because when you're talking about fighting games, you know, you can pair the in-game styles and everything to real styles because they use real styles. Hmm. And real combat sparring and fighting is not about who can throw the biggest combo. Or it's juggle. about react. It's about yeah, or juggle. It's a and, and people go, oh well, DOA has juggling. Yes, it does. But it's about adapting to your opponent. And DOA, as far as I know, Dead or Alive is the only fighting game to date that allows every move by every character. To, to be, be countered, countered by, by every, every character. character. And yeah, it's no, not I... just through... People say, oh, Street Fighter 3 had that flick parry system. E yeah. But... DOA takes it even further. And says there is a universal counter system. That is hard-coded into the game. That every character uses. Some characters have additional counters. But... You can literally, you know, get really good with Jan Lee and have no clue what you're doing with Bass and pick up Bass and absolutely wreck somebody just off counters. It is the only fighting game where player skill can override character tiers. Character tiers exist in DOA, but they don't matter because a player's ability can override the character tier. Hmm. Like somebody in um, Street Fighter 4, let's say Street Fighter 4 Arcade, the biggest edition of it. Okay. If somebody has Dan, the fighter Dan Habiki, and he's up against Sabbat, Sagat, Sagat, however it's pronounced, <laughs> he's up against him, there is almost no freaking way no matter how good the Dan character is, that the Dan character can win that fight. Just because of how much better the character Saget is than Dan. I main Dan. I love Dan. He's great. He's so fast. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but he's so fast. And that literally is something that happened to me. <laughs> I wasn't speak. just speaking in general. That 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 was from experience. I got my five feet achievement on Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition with Dan Hibiki. Won mm -hmm. five ranked matches in a row. The second it threw me against a high tier character, Saget, the person over. sat in the back and threw Tiger, um, the little Tiger Blast. And there was nothing I could do because the second I jumped over one, he Tiger needed me. The character is just better. DOA has those character tiers, but they don't matter. Because a po the person holding the controller, their skill can override that character tier and make it pointless. Yeah, there's, uh, you know what, uh, we're, we're, we're going to step back here in a second. But there was, <laughs> there was, there was one character in, I don't remember if it was Street Fighter. It wasn't Mortal Kombat. It might have been Dead or Alive. 
What was the character? Uh, it was a old, old kind of like Raijin like character. He has, uh, yeah. he's, he's like, looks like he looks like Odin looks to an extent. Old, old very old, very gray old. beard or white beard, white spiky hair, and literally does electrical attacks. But he's huge. He's huge. I don't remember, remember which one it was. I can't think of that character. It's, I'm not. Like I said, because I'm so into DOA and its fighting system and how deep it is, I don't really play the other games that often, so I don't know a lot of Tekken characters. Ooh, I know... You're right, it was Tekken. Right, now that Tekken. you said that, that, you said that. It's Tekken. It was. I don't remember which are, one it was. Are you but talking it, about Heihachi? You talking about Heihachi? I believe so. He's he's big. He's old. He's kind of okay. like an Odin character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Heihachi, he's the big bad of Tekken, I believe. Here's the funny thing, about, the funny him. thing about him. I don't know if they fixed, it. If they fixed it. But he had but this ability to be, ability once he was knocked to the ground, he could still use his electrical kind of push ability where he'd shoot out electrical attacks while still being, while on, the still being on the ground. Like, never gets up. Never he gets just up. spams that. You can spam, spam that. that. Without yeah. doing anything. And they can't hurt you because you're down. down. I I think that was that was that was my that favorite was, that was my favorite moment I ever played Tekken with. Like again, I was playing with again, a friend and he told friend. me not to I, do it. I used to love Tekken one and two. Tekken three was what really turned me off to combo fighters. Because every character had a preset it in the combo list had a preset thirty hit combo. And it was essentially Whoever got that combo off first won the round. It it took all skill away from the game and just made it who could memorize the biggest combo. Mm. Yeah, that would ruin it for it a lot. A lot. Yeah. Tekken straight away from those massively pre-programmed combos now, but. Just like Street Fighter, they're they're too combo based for me. It's more about combo memorization than it is adapting to your opponent and making them mess up. It's more about hitting your moves than making your opponent's move miss. <laughs> Gaming in general has changed so much. Yeah, it really has. And the internet is thousand percent to blame for it but <laughs> for the good and the bad yeah no absolutely but absolutely. yeah it's the reason it's the reason, the reason why andromeda flops so badly i mean because it, people 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 in general they kind of went kind of went off rail for andromeda because like oh look like, man oh, face, look, man it, face. It, it doesn't doesn't move properly yada 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 it's like those aren't game breaking those are funny they're they're they don't break the game in any shape or way or form but they're like oh first 15 minutes in the mouth doesn't move properly it's like that's your takeaway and that's why you're returning the game that's a stupid okay. fucking reason mass effect one two and three every female character in the game their right eye does not open all the way the right eye is only about eighty percent open for every female character in the entire game. Nobody said a freaking word about that. Oh my god! Uh, now I gotta go back gotta through. Go back. I hate you so it, much. It, it may be the left eye. I'm not sure, but one of the eyes. One of the eyes does not, open, is not open. Open on female characters. They don't. The eyelids don't open all the way on That's, the female characters. Uh, Even Fim Shep, it does not matter. And, and no one cared. No, nobody cared. Nobody cared because the game was so good. People are too obsessed nowadays with, with the, the way the game looks. Hurt, with what is wrong with the game. That they can't enjoy what is right with the game. I'm still going to go with, like, I, I, I don't know why people don't, don't why do this more often. I mean, sure, like, oh, well, my buddy says my it's buddy bad, says so I'm bad, not going to so buy it. It's like, buy it. like I, I still, I'm still, I'm still the same way with, like, movies and, and video games. If you tell me it's if good, if you tell me it's good, good, I'm gonna go look at gameplay. I'm gonna look at it, judge it, be like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. 
I don't just say, oh, yeah, okay, so my best friend over here who I've known for 20 plus years or whatever says, no, don't play it. It's bad. It's his experience. Exactly. You make your own experience, you your own experience in the game. Experience. Don't just be like, oh, yeah, no, the, 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 the mass majority says, oh, it's bad. Don't play it. Why? Why? That's that's mass majority. mass majority. Don't 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 go don't with the majority. Go with the majority. Be the individual Be that you are. That you are. Yeah. Form your own experiences on it. I mean, you and me, we've both had a discussion about about that how how stupid the cat was. As, as oh, the a, cat as a big bad enemy. Bad enemy. I mean, I like the idea of them. Well, I mean, I, we needed a big bad about enemy. About how they don't they don't reproduce at all. They turn other beings into Ket. Yes. And I liked yeah. that. It was cool. That was it kinda interesting. had it kinda had like a Halo Flood kind of thing to where they take their enemies and turn them into allies. But in a mass effect way of keeping the mass effect feel of the highly intelligent species and everything. And, and then they just I, kind I of love forget. how you couldn't understand them at the beginning of the game. I yeah. loved that. Yeah. But you slowly they became really nice felt yeah, they really felt alien. It was, it was perfect. And honestly, my biggest gripe with Andromeda is that we didn't get to make, as the character, we didn't get to make first contact with these aliens. We make first contact with them and we're like, oh, okay, cool, the cat. Yeah, okay. And then we're like, oh, okay, the Nexus has been dealing with them for a few, for like six months. Okay. Cool, we found a new race. No, we actually didn't. We just encountered we we found their home world. Same thing with the Angarans. We found their home world. Yeah. Exactly, the Angarans. That, that's what I was talking about. The new race, the Angarans, yeah. No, no, we didn't find them. We found their home world. And that was our first encounter with them. Yay! But the people that got here before us have already encountered them. And they already fucked, it, already up. fucked it up. Yeah. Is the fact that first con you know, it, it, it was advertised off as, you know, a brand new galaxy, brand new experiences. You are the pathfinder. You will find the path and set the way and make first contact. And you find out after you've made first contact that it's not first contact twice. <laughs> it's like they dangled it in front of you. You know, oh, I got you a dollar up. Oh, no, you, no, can't have it too slow. Well, technically, and you, I, did, I, you I just still had first contact with that. You did have first contact with one. No, 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 no. I'm talking first contact overall. The, when did we have first contact in Andromeda? When did you have first contact? When did, you had first contact when you came in touch with that the, the machines that were terraforming the planets. They were still sentient to an extent. The not, remnant? Yeah, not true AI, but you had that one remnant that you could use as an ability that PB had, and you could get her ability to have that remnant follow you around. It was vastly different from the rest of the remnants. It still follows you around like a, like a dog, like a lost puppy. It's still a species. I mean, sure, not true AI like the Gath, but it was kind of on its way. You still had first yeah, but contact that's like there. Saying, that's like saying, oh, I didn't get the chance to, you know, you know, I'm playing this wilderness game and I didn't see any animals. No, there was a squirrel climbing that tree. <laughs> it was there. It was no, there. You still did it. I didn't get to interact with a wolf or a bear, you know. No, there was a squirrel climbing that tree. It counts. <laughs> no, it doesn't count, okay? It does not count. Come on, I was trying to feed you your, your moment and you just said, nah. <laughs> No, Bioware took my moment, dangled my moment in front of my face twice, and then took it. And I still consider them my favorite game studio. Absolutely. No, I will... I, I, of I, the big ones. Of the of, big ones, yeah. Of, I have gone I so have, far as to get the Spectre symbol and the N7 symbol tattooed on my body. That's how much I love the Mass Effect series. I went that far. I went that far. Like I have, I have more to do. I have a whole half sleeve to do with that. With that. But, but that's how much I love the yeah, game love in the, the series. Game. Is I'm willing to get I'm it permanently, to get tattooed permanently tattooed on my body. I mean, it's a good story. It's a good universe and everything. They just 
it, it it's had its down points <laughs> i think ultimately the thing that brought yeah. down mass effect was the restart of andromeda just entirely because i again i still i'm gonna blame ea for that one because and then the worst part is after that after they said yeah restart restart everyone that was involved in creating the original story were all both either either quit or shuffled off to different projects and they started with a new fresh face it's just like you can't do that if you're going to restart the story you need the original people to push the story the correct direction and you need to do it quickly you don't be like oh yeah no all these people that did the story before oh yeah we're gonna shuffle them off oh they quit okay never mind they're going off to different companies blah 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 blah. that's how you fucking lose people i don't understand what a business sense that made in any sense of the word yeah i mean after the back-to-back ops of andromeda and anthem i'm amazed bioware is still a, a studio a game studio i think that bioware will kind of stick around i mean sure will they have the same impact probably not but they might have a miracle coming out with oh no dreadwolf is looking promising so is mass effect 4 with that little 10 second tree teaser there they just the 10 second teaser and the poster you can't I'm forget about the poster with the geth head i missed that where was that let you know hold on you missed I, the Geth head. I on the did poster? not see that. Hold on. You, you need to look this up. I'm looking it up right now. Get Geth head. <laughs> there is a poster for Mass Effect Four. Oh, Geth head Mass Effect poster. A ship that's landed near this crater, and the crater and the the kind of you know impact lines leading up to the crater look yes. like the head the neck and head of a geth including the little light in the middle i did see i did see that that was the first was like teaser they had they had did it on n7 in 2020 yeah the, the they did that the year after rafael sabarge ruined that there was a new mass effect game coming he, yeah, no he, he he knew what he was doing for sure <laughs> he, he got he, so much trouble he for that. knew what he was doing he's like i'm not fucking letting this slide if if i go down i'm taking the ship with me yeah i mean they had the head of bioware there with them or the head of the mass effect franchise at least there with them in that <sighs> meeting and you can go back to the point where rafael sabarge says near the end so is, is there any chance of us working together on another title coming up or anything and <laughs> And you could just see the game director's face just go, "You piece of shit! <laughs> you are so fired!" Like they didn't end up. They did, as far as I know, they didn't end up firing him because he's no. been Raphael Sabarge has been in every Fireware game, all of them. Oh my God, Raphael! Raphael Sabarge, if you come by and you listen to this, man. <laughs> you knew what you, you, knew were, what doing, you were doing, and you could you knew you could yes. somewhat get away with it. Oh my god. Just, be, just because you were wrapping up being Jiminy Cricket at that moment does not mean you could get away with spoiling Mass Effect 4, okay? Uh he didn't uh, spoil it though. They, they they're like, okay, we're gonna release this poster just to make everyone go away. Yeah. But no, no, yeah, no, I've seen that. I saw that poster that I didn't realize you're right. I didn't realize that that looked like a Geth head. Yeah. The Jiminy Cricket thing was a reference. He played on ABC's Once Upon a Time. And he was Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. In that in that twisted tale. And he, he played the role pretty well. Okay, well, like, okay, well okay, okay, okay. I'm looking at the looking, looking at the poster at the, right, now, right now. And and you know, you're right. You're right. I, I didn't it's realize it. I didn't realize that. I, I could see that. the secondary light. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to that. What really grabbed my attention from the original, from that, from that poster, was the ship. ship. It reminiscent, reminiscent of, of the Normandy with a Pathfinder ship style. Yeah, like it, it kind of looked like a cross between the Normandy and the Tempest. It did. It really did. It really did. And, yeah. and it's, I, it's the one thing that grabbed my attention, and. The crater was. I didn't even realize that the crater was looking like a Geth head. Yeah. So 
mad that I missed that. That was years ago, man. I know. And and I'm you're so just pissed now, off. Yeah, you just told me that now. I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> you don't talk to me enough. That's what it is. Fuck! There's so much with that. Oh my god. Yeah. There's so much I could have gone with that. Oh. That really annoys me. So much. So much. But it. it Going back to our original topic of my crackhead theory, crackpot theory, excuse me. I'm here crack, that crackpot theory. Crack theory. <laughs> do, do you have anything else to add to that? I mean, because the, the reason why she never told what I was going to say, I, I, we got side, sidetracked a thousand times. Yeah. What I was going to say is the reason why she wouldn't have told Shepard <laughs> in Mass Effect 2 is because Shepard just got brought back from, to, from, to life. Shepard was dead. Dead, 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 dead. Yeah, dead, dead. <laughs> and you don't drop news on somebody like like that. A if, month being a back month alive. Being back alive. Yeah, a month being back alive, unless you know that they can mentally and physically handle that shock. Then the way Mass Effect 2 ends, there's no time because Tally is. <laughs> already the shadow broker and has her hands full liara, adapting liara, all liara. the liara yes you are right <laughs> sorry tally's my favorite character so tally's your favorite I... favorite favorite romantic, romantic character. character yes it was liara until mass effect 2 and 3 came out and then i was like oh i don't yeah. know if i like liara that much anymore <laughs> but yeah going back liara was busy trying, you know adapting all the shadow broker tech to her liking and you know, getting glyph fixed and everything. But she had her hands full there for the in-between. And then Shepard got, you know, committed a war crime by killing <laughs> billions of Batarians. I mean, war crime! It, it, I mean, it was necessary. I get it. Uh, here's but, the thing with that, though. I mean, <laughs> hold, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Was it a bad decision? No. Yes. It was a terrible decision to an extent. Was it a cultural shock to the entire world that played the game? Yes. Absolutely. And <laughs> Shepard committed genocide. He could, Shepard did commit genocide. And I think that was the biggest cultural shock that the gaming universe had ever seen. You, you you didn't even have an you option of like saying, of no. like saying no. This you is could going try to, have... to warn them to get out, but you there was no way to do it. Like Here, yeah. here's the thing. No, 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 no. Batarians didn't get out. Some Batarians get out, but yes, most, of most of the population did only die. the ones that were already spaceborne. Or uh, out. Of all or the off. yeah. Off world or spacefaring in ships in orbit or in you know that could get to a ship within 30 minutes and be out of the system and you know less Pretty than brilliant. an hour yeah only those batarians lived yes. and the ones that were yeah. already off system yeah because no. they're like oh shepherd just destroyed the whole world no shepherd slammed a, a mass moon? relay Yes, with 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 a moon sized rock. With a yeah, with a moon sized rock. Shepard literally took the thing that he st took the thing that they stopped, Asteroid X eighty seven in the first game's DLC, and forced it to happen in the second game's DLC. <laughs> Wait a minute. X eighty seven. Yeah, Asteroid X-87, that was when the Batarians were trying to uh, slam an asteroid. Into New Horizon. Brought Horizon. into New Horizon, yeah. How did I get all the way to Karsh... Or, uh, not, it's not Karshan. Um, the Batarian Homeworld. Batarian what's, homeworld. what's the name of that place? Well, it, it's a different asteroid and you know okay, I, was different say, thing. I was about to say what yeah. do you mean that's x87 there's no way they got no, that no, no, far no. i'm not saying that's x87 i'm saying the exact thing that Aunt, that shepherd stopped with x87 okay. shepherd turned around and did on a bigger scale because <laughs> shepherd yeah. ended up hitting a mass relay with it instead of a instead planet instead of just a planet so shepherd wiped out that entire system 
and the systems and around the, it. The systems around it didn't get affected by the blast, but they were cut off from the mass relay. <sighs> and it saved a few years. Yeah. Here's a plot that I think was answered somewhere in the lore, but I've never been able to find it. Let's hear it. Is hear it. how did the Reaper show up at Earth first? Because we know they were entering from the Batarian system. That Supposed was their to. system Supposed of to. entry. Supposed to. Supposed to. They were supposed to enter there and then hit that mass relay, and that mass relay was going to bring them to the Citadel. Which that had was been like moved. a backup. Moved. Yeah, that was like a backup in case the Citadel plan failed, which it did because we stopped it. And we moved it. We moved it. Yeah. Moved it to an unknown region, an unknown region. with a. With a actually, they moved, actually, they moved to a whole mass relay. Whole mass relay. They moved it. And they moved the Citadel as well. But my thing is, how did the Reapers show up at Earth first? Not why. I get why. You, you get it's why. Because in the first game, they deemed humans were going to be the no, the next Reaper. And in the second game, they were making the human Reaper. Mm -hmm. And we stopped them. So I get why they went to Earth first, because we were the biggest threat. If they could wipe out humanity, the rest of the races might be bigger, stronger, faster, smarter than humans, but they didn't have that motivation that the humans did. Of unity. Of unity. unity. Of unity, yeah. So I get why they went to Earth first. My problem is how they got there. Okay. Okay. I have I have a big I have a, I have a kind of a addition to that. So so we know that we know to that get to, get to Mene, which, which is the uh moon of the Turians. Okay. We have to go have through to go the through earth, earth relay and another relay to get there. Technically wherever the wherever the if we if we do the, the galaxy the, by the, the galaxy, way it is, by the, way it is. the Batarians are yeah, off. Yeah, because cer certain relays link to certain relays. There's yes, like and a that's relay only, network. And that's only, it's, only, it's like a You can't just hit a relay and warp to any relay in distance. There's only certain relays that connect to certain relays. Yes. So and, they, there is a specific path they would have to take from Batarian space, even if they spent that year or, what, or however long it was after the destruction of the Batarian <laughs> relay, going through system by system which we know they did because when they showed up at earth they had the cannibal unit which was essentially like the husk was to humans that was the cannibal to batarians they had transformed batarian units All right. and a lot of them because they went through batarian space first yeah and, there, and but coming from Batarian space, there is a you know even if they went to the closest mass relay, there is a specific path they would have had to take. Yes, and they did. They they went through the Turian space because you have to use to get to Turian space. You have to use the Earth relay. It's the only one that yeah. leads there. Arcturus. Yes, yeah. and they get through. And they they, get, they hit Arcturus, and then they go to Earth straight to Earth. So they had to stop. My Thing is, how did they get to Earth unnoticed? They didn't. They didn't. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you realize and you remember, again, again I, 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 I played the shit out of three to the point of absurdity. With the with, with, that, with that relay. With that relay. Once you left once Earth, you, you went, left straight Earth, went straight to Manet. Manet is, Manet is already, already on fire, fire, and there's Reapers, there's Reapers at the door. So the Reapers so stopped the Reapers there, first there first before going straight before to Earth. Straight. They dropped off they some dropped units off some because units. every because time you use a mass relay, relay, you are in your individual you kind of individual space, space warp. There, yeah. is, there, there is, is no group. There is, no there is individual. individual. So, so they just like, okay, yeah, you like, units okay. will go off and drop off. here. We'll take the majority, go straight to Earth and just Earth. nuke the planet, essentially. But we are, but we are humans and we are we are we are survivors and fighters to the last. 
<laughs> we're stubborn. <laughs> we're idiots. <laughs> yeah, we're stubborn idiots. <laughs> we are just stubborn idiots that know how to defend themselves. Because, that, because, because that's the issue. And it's the reason why the Turans like, the like us so much. Like us. Because we're stubborn, we're stubborn idiots. We're more stubborn, we're more than, stubborn them. than them. We were, we again, were, again, first unification The Turians war. don't typically like humans. They, no, because they, they lost. Humans. They lost the unification war. They didn't lose They it. lost they were for, so they were, bad. <laughs> but it, it was called, not unification, first contact. First contact war, you're right, the, sorry, the unification was... The reason they didn't win the, the first contact war, because they had us outnumbered and outgunned. <laughs> we just had them outwilled. The reason they didn't win the first contact war is because the council stepped in and forced them into new... At, at least attempted negotiations with this new alien species. Yes, but here's the thing. Here's the Again, thing. Yeah. I want to state this with state absolute facts. Absolute facts. <laughs> the, Turians, the Turians, some of the Turian some hierarchy the Turian hates are. humans. It's Absolutely. It's a, it's a point of oh, moment for the Turian counselor until the humans come and save the entire council the space entire or start over and let them die. The Turian counselors, both if you save them or if you let them die, the new one understands what happened and as a militaristic species, he understood that and let it go. Yeah. But the reason why they're all upset with us is because, again, humans, undermanned, undermanned, under technology, and we still start whooping their butts. Sure, they took sure. planets at a time, but those planets, those planets fought, fought to the last military soldier, soldier, and they still, and they took, still out took out more Turians than there were, uh, were humans uh, on, that planet. on that planet. Yeah, every time, every time, because we knew because the we state knew of guerrilla warfare, warfare outweighs, outweighs military, military formations. formations. Yeah, we, we got Ivan to come over and teach us. <laughs> Teach us scorched earth warfare with, with Russian tactics. And we I apologize to any Russian. That's, that's a horrible <laughs> accent, but you know, it, it, I got the point across. Yeah, you know? no, it's it. That's why I say the Turians lost the war. It doesn't matter that peace was negotiated. You still yeah, lost the war lost because the war. it wasn't even the fact that we outwilled them or we were stubborn and stayed up. It's the fact that we still understood the efforts and the the efficiency of guerrilla warfare. Oh, okay. There's a group, there, concentration of troops over here. Okay, we're going to go over there, hit them as hard as we can, and leave. We're not going to stay for the fight. We're going to hit them hard, leave. And that's what the Turians never understood. Only Garrus figured out what humans were so good at and why we were good at surviving. It's because we learned guerrilla warfare. He showed that on Manet with that small outpost that we were on. Yeah. A squad of three goes in, takes out a unit, leaves. They don't stick around. They leave. That was the problem with Turians. They were so ingrained in their military style. They're like, oh, okay, here, take this point and hold it. Going back to uh, Mass Effect 3, the ending, did you ever play the optional boss fight? Optional boss fight? The optional boss fight right before the catalyst. You talking about you talking about the uh, the elusive, elusive man? man. Yeah. I did once, yes, I did a few times. Why? Because to get that fight, you have to do certain dialogue options in Mass Effect Three, in addition <laughs> to giving the Omega Four relay base to the elusive man at the end of Mass Effect Two. No, you didn't. You didn't have to give him the Omega Four relay you base. You did have to give him that base. I never, I never did. I still fought him once. I never did. I never did. Like I never gave him the base ever. Huh. And I still fought him on occasion. It was in the original version before they released the extended. Because once the extended came out, I was never able to fight. Him. I was always able to talk talk him into either shooting himself. Yeah. Or your character pulls the trigger via uh, uh, renegade option. Yeah. Never fought him, but, option. Yeah. but but the original, without the extended edition, I did fight him with not giving him the base. 
that's odd because I always thought you had to give him the base because he had to have that Reaper tech in him. He in you know I think I think in the end for the fight to trigger. I think for the extended edition, they basically put that in. They're like, here, he has this because he salvaged the heart. heart. Yeah, of the human reaper. Yes. So he was still had the technology. So they're like, okay. And if you destroyed the base, he still has some of the human reaper tech. Yeah. But you destroyed most of it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I did fight him. Uh, one occasion. It was it was very very early on though. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's. I think the. See, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and this is going to. I guarantee you, piss off a lot of people. So we have human based species, right? We encompass humanoid. Human. Okay, humanoid. We're humans. I'm I'm using humans. Yeah. Humans have okay, encompassed a lot. Encompass a lot of traits. All right. Krogans. They're known for, they their, known for their aggressive their state. state. Humans have that. Have that. Mm-hmm. We have the Salarians. They're known for their known brains for their and brain. technological standpoint, as well as their, let's call it specialist like minds, kind of spies. Yeah. Humans, yeah. Have that. Humans have that. Yeah. We have the Turians. The they're Turians. militaristic they're and stubborn. And tactical. Yeah. And tactical. Humans have that. Have that. In yep. spades. We have the Asari. Asari. They are yeah. knowledge, wisdom, and uh, just you know they're very, they're very, they're very wisdom because they live a thousand years. Yeah, we have the wisdom. We, have the we just wisdom. don't live that long. Yeah. Okay. You see where I'm going with this? Humans have everything that yeah. every other species has in the in the galaxy. This will put it into a whole new theory that well, humans all the were other cr- humanoid species. Yes, humanoid species. Humanoid. Okay. Because I wouldn't say we're anything like the Hanar. Okay, hold on, hold on now. Hold on. Although now. some people, hold on. some people would be like. We the don't Hanar. have enough. I don't have enough knowledge of the Hanar to sp- pick their specific traits. So oh, I can't. I can't do, that one. can't do that. One. They're deeply religious. And if you remember, we find out that the Enkindlers are the Protheans. Worship yeah, were the Protheans. Protheans. Okay, so... And the, so. It, they were one of the few races that the Protheans actually had direct interaction with. The only True. reason the Hanar were spared for the Reapers is because the Protheans wiped all data of the Hanar. So the Reapers never found them. But here's the other thing. As the a Reaper, sentient species. The, 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 the Hanar were never technological. Yeah. So they were... They, even if... The Reapers guaranteed found them because they're searching for sentient life. They left the babies alone. Non-technological. Yeah, yeah or, or, humans were around when the Protheans got wiped out. But we out. weren't so technological yet. No, we were still tribal at that point. So, well, I mean, the Hanar worshipped the Protheans, but they didn't have the technology, so they're still tribal then. So, yeah. there's... Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like the the Protheans probably didn't even need to wipe them out of history. History. But canonically, the Protheans, you do find out that yes, the Protheans you do. wiped all record of the Hanar to protect them. Yeah. So I mean, like, okay, so I don't know enough about the Hanar. I mean, they're religious. Uh, we have uh, what was Thane? What was his species? He worked with the Hanar. Thancreos? Yeah, Thancreos. What was his species again? Oh, what was his species name? Drell? Drell, thank you. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Drell. So Drell worked the Hanar. They were essentially their arms and legs uh, assassins and specialists. Again, humans yeah. have that in spades. Have that in spades. Yeah. We have the Batarians who are stubborn, stubborn aggressive, aggressive, religious, religious cultists. Flavors. <laughs> Flavors. <laughs> Flavors, flavors. Humans flavors. again humans have that again. in spades. Uh, we, I mean, we, yeah. we have the Elcor. Yeah. Okay. They are they are kind of de-emotionalized to an extent. They they speak their emotions. Humans yeah, still do we that. We, we still do that. Okay, we have that. Yeah. Humans encompass every single species, even the Rachni, with their queen and hierarchy in human species. 
can we state and this is me going off on a like the deepest limb that i can state that somewhere the protheans decided oh hey we're going to instill these species traits from all of the species into one just for fun because they had the technology to do it they could have they could have done it they did however a lot of the species a lot of the non-human humanoid species like let's say the um the the lizards i can't it just left me salarians Solar thank you yes the salarians were still quadrupedal when the protheans got wiped out they were still walking on four legs because and we know this for a fact because with the from the ashes dlc for three which had no business being dlc that should have been base game but i get <laughs> yes. that it, i get that yeah. it was a pre-order bonus and everything okay fine but still the prothean that you say he tells you when you first meet a salarian he says oh so the salarian are bipedal now He's just shocked to know that they've evolved to the point. It's been long enough that, that they've evolved to the point of them walking upright. They used to walk on all fours. Well, here's the other thing with that. We also find out that the Asari are only as wise and as advanced as they are because the Protheans were the secretly... No, not just left the beacon. The Protheans were secretly guiding them in their tribal days. I, yeah, well, that's that's base well, that's, game. That's base game. But yeah, that, but here's the, here's the thing. I'm still because that means the Protheans were there. They sampled the DNA. Sampled the DNA. Yeah, which means that they could have. Because if we talk about that as far as, that, as, far as with Solarian still Solarian being quadrupedal. Quadrupedal. Yeah, we could also say that the humans were too because. Because we were if we we're still tribal and we're talking we're talking cro magnus and and like before they started before walking on just their feet humans also walked on their knuckles on their... so they were still some, they were still quadrupedal yeah. they were still quadrupedal so it never specifies where humanity was in their evolution process so we could have also been quadrupedal to an extent i mean you can go back and say you know what was human what were you know homo sapiens like 50,000 years ago we can even look at it now but still. yeah because you know mass effect takes place in 20 what is it 2056 something like that yeah yeah like it's not far from now so when you know the Protheans are like all oh, fifty thousand years ago, we could actually go back in our own history. Yeah, there weren't records back then, but you know we have fossils and stuff to study to know what life on Earth was like then. Fifty thousand years. I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd say we were still apes. Because well, I wouldn't we, say apes, we, but more ape-like. Because we did five thousand BC 5, as a movie. Yeah, but you can't go off Hollywood. I'm not, but I'm just saying trails. there's the, you no, know, but you know, 5000 BC, we had Egypt, we had uh, Greece. I'm talking like, well, like you, we can go back that far. Human species were walking upright at 5000 BC. Let's say that. We go back yeah. 45. I mean, absolutely. Go, so that is right there, 5000 BC. That even if we were to go by today's standards, today, that is only 7000 years. Yeah. Okay. Not 50,000. We add 43,000 more years of evolution. We are walking quadrupedal, even because I, I, because that didn't start happening until humans. Let's, let's use that word. Humans started evolving Homo into sapien. Homo yeah. sapiens started evolving into Homo sapien. Cro Magnus was essentially quadrupedal, like towards before Homo sapiens came into play and wiped them out. Yeah. Cro -Magnus, Cro Magnus were the original, original. Homo sapiens. Original. So they actually walk on their walk. knuckles. Because apes, apes, apes and gorillas do. And that's where we evolved from. Because, because I, think I think if I'm remembering this right, they do you do ask him what humans were like. And he said, You guys were still you guys were hairy. 
were apes to an extent like I that don't remember that exactly i remember him talking about just about every other species but yes. not humans i don't I, remember him talking about about fifty thousand years ago what the humans were like again he was also yeah, born also in the middle of the other, war yeah uh, other than the fact that we were primitive yes we were and still primitive. are and it, still are yeah but I, i'm just saying like it's saying, it's like, it's that whole thing like that, that we could still be quadrupedal and we again didn't have superior intelligence to know our ass from our foot did, did you okay l <laughs> let's go back to um fun topics <laughs> did you ever during it the dlc for three the citadel dlc did you ever sleep with javik did you ever get with javik you know no. i thought there was about, certain uh, things that had to be going on yes no i uh for every you had to be female shepherd you yes. had to not actively have a romance active. in three you could have some in the works but you couldn't have officially locked into any romance partner see by that point by i'd that always got locked it in yeah most people did but, and yeah i you found that out actually, and i was like i was like you know what i'm gonna do it on this playthrough javik it, it, it was it, it's hilarious in the morning when you're waking up drunk next to him <laughs> as fem shep <laughs> you're probably like wait a minute what just happened yeah. uh no yeah no i i knew about that but i never actually did it yeah that makes me want to go try now <laughs> <laughs> This, just to get the response and be like, do you guys remember when this happened? Because everybody's like, oh yeah, Javik during that DLC hooked up with Tally if you weren't with her. It's like, yeah, he did, but you hook up with Javik if you're Femship and not in a relationship. Okay. And have and have taken the party to its max and yes. let it and let as much of it play out as possible. Okay, you know, you know we were we were talking about uh, prehistoric and primitive what the species are today, the humanoid species. Here's the thing: if you do, you do you know what the Turians were? I know the Turians are not an amino acid based species. Dextro amino. Yeah, dextro amino. Yes. So um, they they like physically on a chemical <laughs> level are completely incompatible with the rest of the races. No, not Tally. Not Tally. There are Tally is also Tally Dextro. Is also Dextro. Because she and Garrus share, share food. Yes, her and Garrus share food, but the Quarians are a little different. Okay. Here. Because of the three hundred year adaptation to um sterile space yes but yeah no no yeah no i i, I get yeah, what you're here, here's the yeah. thing here's the thing Koreans Koreans were descendant of birds i mean i could see that yeah like they were like like, like kind of like harpies kinda like, i, I want to say almost like they kind of descended that way mm -mm, that would explain all of the chitinous armor that they naturally have yes yeah. and because yeah. how it's a have... little more like bug like almost but not quite bug we have the Krogans. Yeah. They they were like turtles. I want to go. I want to go with that because they have they have so much really armor. angry Eastern snapping turtles. But yes, yeah. <laughs> let's let's go with that. Angry angry snapping turtles. Yeah, snapping turtles. Let's go with that because because as you know they have a ton of base armor, just naked. They don't even need to wear armor. That's just bonus really. for them. Yeah. No, they could take a yeah. hit and. Oh yeah. And proof that they, the proof of a lot of stuff, how strong a, Shepard is, a is when naked she... Krogan running at you, you're still, <laughs> you, you are still doubting the bullets in your life. You are still shitting your pants. Yes. <laughs> Probably worse than a fully armored Krogan. I mean, oh, yeah, no, they, I, <laughs> still, like, it is, it is, especially considering they see. canonically have three testicles. So that four. would be four. They have a quad. Four. That's right. Yeah, that's right. They have four. <laughs> that's why yeah. they're so virile is because they have four of them yeah okay. well why they why they should be virile <laughs> why they used to be virile uh no technically it wasn't even the krogan males that stopped the virility it was the females that were not virile anymore yeah yeah i know 
But still, it was it was it's still it was still funny. Um, but yeah, no, Krogan's angry snapping turtles. We have the Solar- yeah. we have the Solarians that were lizards. I mean, that's still that trait still holds for them to this to, to the day. More like amphibians, salamanders, like salamanders and geckos. Yes, and they're more like those. Yes, they, they're and salamander lizards. and geckos. Yeah. And then we have the Corians. Now we don't really see a whole lot, but they do have the kind of reverse that reverse kind of leg, don't they? They do. They do. Their their knees are backwards facing. So and their their shins um bow forward. So we could kind of go with almost uh, grasshopper like. Almost grasshopper-like. I, I wouldn't go grasshopper. I'd go like ostrich or something. Yeah. Well, I, the reason I go grasshopper is because have you seen the con, the canonical Corian like what their faces look like? I've seen I've, tallies to an extent. Yes. That that is the only one we see. Okay. But, so canon Corian poster. Let's look at this. In in the canon, the Corians like. They they almost have like an antenna, two antenna on top. Like they really kind of look like Mantis from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, like, okay. They look yeah. a little like Mantis. They're they're I, kind of bug like. Okay, I'm I'm looking at a poster that was that was that are, was made by are someone. Are you looking? Are you looking at the original art? In, in Mass Effect Three, are you or are you looking at the redone from the Legendary Edition remaster? No, uh, because because they kind of retconned the original stock photo they mo- they modified, like for Callie's photo in Mass Effect Three, they literally went to stock photos, grabbed one of the female photos and modified it, and slapped it in the game to save time. Like. People found the actual photo from stockphotos.com or stockfolio.com or whatever, and people found the actual photo <laughs> that they took, and it was funny. Well, I'm looking at one right now that was uh, from someone actually got, someone actually a, got photo. a photo. Photo. They got close enough to yeah. Tally where the the mask. mask. That protects her yeah, face protects your is kind of gone. Yeah, you, you can you can kind of see through the mask a little on some of the angles and lightings, but you never get a good look at a Quarian face unless you get the photo of Tally. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the photo and of they, Tally. They, they they are kind of bug like. Okay, which is okay. which is again the reason why I went grasshopper instead of ostrich. Because I'm looking at one. I'm looking I, at this one might not. When you're saying grasshopper and ostrich, like I'm I'm more grasshopper. Like uh, I'm looking at one okay. right now that I only said ostrich because you said ostrich. I know, I and I, you said grasshopper. You're right. That's why I changed it. I was like, so I'm looking at a couple of them. There's ones that are more. They have a more human like face, and I'm pretty sure that's the one you're talking about when they remastered and kind of retconned it. But, yeah, one, but well, I'm looking at one right now that right. has kind of a different face, different nose. Face. It kind of looks like, kind of looks um, like um, uh, Star Trek. Uh, well, I mean, you've also got to remember that the fans took that photo and ran with it yeah. and have made a lot of fan art. Yeah, th- this one and I'm looking at is probably fan art. art. Yeah, when we're talking about canon, the only time we've ever actually seen a Quarian face was that one photo yeah. on Shepard's um, bed table. Oh, there. Here's one. Okay, At so the end uh, of the, near oh, the this, end of the third game. This is the legendary edition. Never mind. So there's a couple of them that show up. There's one with there's one her with mask off mask and hood off. down with hair and everything. There's one with yeah, that's her fan. Hood. That's fan art. <laughs> Yeah, that you know, uh, that is like, absolutely fan art. <laughs> yes, I was just saying, like this, you can kind of see with the with the kind of the antenna, but again, it's more of lines, not really antennae. It's more like lines on the face. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, I almost want to say lizard like, but instead yeah. of insect like. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't know though. What's funny? about the Quarian helmet thing is if you are actively pursuing a romance with Tally. With, with Tally. 
in Mass Effect 3, when Legion comes back and you're infiltrating the um ship. Get and you're infiltrating the Geth fleet. Dreadnought, yeah, yeah the Dreadnought. Above, above Rainock. Yep. You end up diving into the Geth network and seeing past memories. Yep. Or, yes. I guess, I guess files yeah. of the interactions between the Quarians and the Geth. Yep. And the Quarians are in their suits. Yes. And you have the option to ask if these are the memories or if these are, you know, records from before the Quarians left their home planet, why are they in their suits? Yep. And yep. Legion's response Legion re is perfect. Legion's response is beautiful. <laughs> of we assume, we did it for comfortability because we you know we you've assume never you've never one. seen you yes. know how, how many how many creators have you seen without their <sighs> suit? And if you're with Tally and have Tally with you for that mission, Mailship, Tally, and Legion are your squad. Yep. <laughs> Shepard responds with, well, one. <laughs> and and Legion, Legion goes, one. Oh, you are intimate with creator Tally Zora. <laughs> <laughs> and it just gets super awkward really fast, and it is hilarious. Oh, it's just little things, just the little things that make us smile. The best thing about Bioware, in my opinion, the best thing about Bioware is the random banter between the characters. party members. Yes. Between party members. Like, you even go back to Jade Empire. Depending on who you had with you during certain missions, they would have snarky comments or funny things to say, and they would interact with each other in different ways based on who was in your party. And that made the game feel alive. It made you want to play multiple playthroughs. That's... So you could hear all of that special dialogue that was well written and well voiced. I think, yeah, no, I, I think that's I think what that's... gaming all games need. All games need. Like those little those bits. Little bits. Just make any game better. Like it doesn't it doesn't take away. It adds and it always will it always add because will add. I think Mass Effect think has, the has the best little best side little hustles side hustle. ever. Because you can walk you past can someone walk and they'll say something stupid and your characters you will see, respond. You see, my opinion, Mass Effect was really good with those with those like you said, side hustles, the, the little side conversations and the stuff. One -liners. But the one-liners. It the one-liners, yes. <laughs> I should go. <laughs> yes. No. I it's like go. it's like you're stuck but in the thing. It's like it, it, it should be. I should go. <laughs> that was great. That they, was they funny. Said, they said that that wasn't planned to be put in the DLC. They originally, <sighs> kind of like um. Oh, funny story. Funny story. But going real quick, going back to what I was saying is, Mass Effect's banter is amazing. But in my opinion, the best follower banter Bioware has ever done was KOTOR. It's of the Old Republic? Yeah, the the banter between your followers as you're just on an elevator or walking around on a planet huh. or walking around your ship is amazing. Knights of the Old Republic is one of my favorite games of all times. Not the second one, because Bioware didn't make that. And I'm not I'm I'm, I'm not getting into Obsidian Entertainment right now, but a rant for another day. <laughs> sure. But yes. Anyway, funny story about that about that DLC, the Citadel DLC in Mass Effect Three. This and this is a hundred percent accurate because in earlier in the podcast of in Seven Day, when Raphael Sabarge ruined or let on that Mass Effect 4 was in early production. He talks about it. Earlier in that, they mention that the animators had an idea <laughs> for a toothbrush. For a Mass Effect field toothbrush. Oh man, that, that's that, where that they came were, from? That they, that they wanted in the game and they didn't <sighs> have anywhere to, to put, put it. it. 
to put it. it no, it wasn't the animators. It was the storyboard. One, one of the storyboard designers had this had this idea for a for you know a toothbrush, and they wanted they wanted it in the game so bad, and they couldn't find anywhere to put it. So they were finally like, okay, when Shepard, when you know Clone Shepard, locks real <sighs> Shepard off the ship, we should have the new yeoman for the ship. I can't remember her name, the character's name. Not Kelly, the, but, not Kelly, but the, um, the blacks, the black Sa- Samantha, um, the Samantha, 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 Samantha trainer. Yes, yes. Her. I say black. I I was just denoting <laughs> her skin color. It Once you said that, I was like, okay, that yeah, yeah. Samantha trainer. They said they they had the idea for her to use the Mass Effect feels of her toothbrush to get to them in. Jimmy a, to, to Jimmy the Hatch. Oh my god. But on That's the other where side came from? they they went to the animator that originally had come up with the idea for this toothbrush and they said <sighs> How we want you, you to do something. <laughs> we want you to we want you to do something and the animator looked at him and said, "You want me to you, you want me to make that damn toothbrush, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like son, of a, son of a You want me to, you want me to you want me to actually draw that damn toothbrush, don't you? Yeah, no, that's that's pretty funny. That was funny. one of the best parts of that podcast was that story. Oh man, that makes that makes it that makes that whole scene better cuz if it was meant as a joke, yeah. It adds yeah. that that whole thing. She's like, as, I barely got outside without my own toothbrush because they added they they talked about it. She's like, I want to buy yeah. this toothbrush and here's the credits. Like you give the you give her credits to do it. She buys yeah. the toothbrush. She's like, it's the one thing that I was able to grab on my way out the door before you said me packing. And it's just like it's like oh yeah. So that's what that looks like. Okay. And it looks yeah. so so good like it's funny looking and everything out when she turns it on and it get this yeah. blue arc going and i'm just like oh well, my it god uses tiny mass effect fields to break yes no and i'm like, I'm like I'm they like, crack so... joke they cracked a joke about it in the base game and they actually brought it into yeah the no i'm just like it was originally a joke and i'm just like oh okay no it's cool let's i have the credits to spare here you go go away yeah and it's just like, and it's like oh my god you actually made the damn thing just for fun oh and then, yeah and then it was originally still a joke in the end yeah see that's they why gaming a, a is so good writing, a lot of the writing in the citadel dlc because the citadel dlc they said was the last thing they made for it and it was mostly and it was mostly like joking like it was it was like here you it, guys you beat the game here you go yeah, More stuff to it, do. What it was was it was them just letting loose and kind of poking fun, which is why when Shepard gets locked in the container in the archives, <laughs> you know, I should go. Do I really sound like that? I should go. I should go. I should go. I should go. <laughs> and no you matter know, who like, you pick. Do I really? And they're like, Shepard, should yes. we focus? It's like, no, no. Do I really I sound know. like that? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> like it's no matter what character you pick to get locked in there with you, it's still like Shepard, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just, it's just mind blowing. My favorite part from the after party to the DLC is actually not hooking up with Javik. Like that's hilarious. But my favorite part is when Grunt starts answering the doorbell and going no and no no <laughs> no <laughs> click <laughs> click no i don't click. care grunt was the be- sure, you need best to try this. best add on i'm sorry it, I, it's going to piss off a lot of people i like you know liked... who voices grunt don't who you? voices grunt a legendary voice actor his name just left me but it's spike spiegel from um cowboy bebop Never watched it. Sorry. Oh, he's been in a ton of stuff. His name just left me, but um, he he is an amazing voice actor. I mean, and Jennifer Hale's an amazing voice actress too. Yes, absolutely. You know, she she's lent her voice from everything from Naomi from Metal Gear Solid to Cinderella from in disney the original she wasn't disney. The, 
not the original. Not the original. The original Cinderella was like the fifties. <laughs> that was not Jennifer Hale. But Ain't Cinderella <laughs> Cinderella two and three and all of Cinderella's animated appearances since then, like in the cartoon Sophia the First, where they brought in a bunch of the princesses and the it anytime Cinderella has been on screen in the past twenty years, twenty, thirty years, it has been Jennifer Hale okay. voicing her. And Jennifer Hale is just amazing. Man, I this actually is... didn't like Mel Shep in the first game. As Oof. much as I love Matt Mercer. As Matt much Mercer. as I love Matt Mercer. Matt Mercer, he, I don't think he did that good of a job with Mel Shepard in the first game. He just sounds bored. But two and three were way better for, for Mel Shepard. Yeah. Well, he again, but, at that point, he was like, yeah, yeah let's but, go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. But for me, female Shepard was just some of the best voice acting in the game. Until we get to Grunt. Grunt just Oh man, Grunt, Grunt Grunt I think my I best think interaction with Grunt back. was and this is again the dumbest idea. Towards the end of the Rachni incursion where you start the option to kill or save the Rachni Queen. I save her again. But here's the thing with that. Here's the thing with that. When you save the Rachni Queen Every other member yeah, of Grunt's member party, party kind of his, his party kind of leaves, kinda leaves leaving, him there, leaving him there to duke it out, duke it out. with tons of Rachna. Now, now Krogan are, Krogan are like monsters in combat. Uh, we already okay. know this. Steve Blum. Steve Blum. That's his name. Steve Steve Bloom? Steve Bloom? Yeah, that was Grunt. Steve Bloom. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, you know what? I think my best interaction with Grunt, and I think the best moment for him was when he comes when he out comes from there, bleeding and parts of covered, and covered I just and covered off on him, and you look back, off of him. and he's just like, "You got some to eat," and you just carry his ass off, and just like, "Oh my god, what a badass!" Like he well, walks out. You gotta out. remember. You gotta remember. Warlord or Okir designed Grunt to be the greatest apex. insult. No, to be the great the apex of the Krogan, but to yes. be the greatest insult to the Genophage as possible. <sighs> Not to overcome it, but to ignore it. <laughs> Man, Kro Krogan. he is as perfect of a Krogan genetically as a Krogan can possibly be. And and he goes and joins or not that makes it that, oh man yeah it, I'm yeah, sorry yeah Steve Grunt. Bloom Steve Bloom it, I I I was shocked when I found that out but yeah. Grunt Grunt is the I'm sorry besides there's there's like a top five I have Grunt is in that top five Legion is in that top five Liar is in that top five Hackett is in that top five I'm sorry. As okay, who's the do... fifth? You've named four out of your top five now. <laughs> who's the fifth? Who's the fifth? Who's the fifth? We want to know. I'm sorry, and this is probably going to both be honestly true and absolutely correct. Edie is the Edie was a good character. Edie was, Edie a, was a good funny character. character. I'm sorry, AI learning how to be human and all that other stuff, learning from Legion. I mean, my it, favorite oh. Edie, my favorite Edie interaction was in Mass Effect 2. Okay, <sighs> near the end. All right, let's see if we have the same one. Same one. When when Jeff Joker <laughs> is it is it is it when, is it when is it when I like to see humans on their knees? Yes. yes! When he says, yes! "Wait, you want me to crawl through the ducks?" And she says, and Edie responds with, "I love the sight of humans on their knees." Oh yes. And then that it gets is, awkwardly right. quiet for a few it seconds. It is the best. That was a I'm joke. Sorry, it is. Yes. The, like I'm sorry. The the animators, the storyboard people. If you all put that in as a joke, you had the best one line out of the entire series, bar none. Like there is nothing that comes close. It is. I was. I first saw that. I was giggling for hours because of how stupidly funny it was and jeff's face i do not care like how bad that was yes. like like technology was that face of oh just fit. like 
You're an AI. <laughs> you should not be making human servitude jokes. It's like, <laughs> no. I, it, we already have the Geth. We don't oh, need the was, Geth and Edie. It okay? was. <laughs> it was. It was perfect. It is the yes best thing because nothing, nothing Edie says ever comes that close again. No, no. Edie has some absolute slappers. Oh yeah, some like, of her lines, but that by far was the best. Like, it, I just, I want to go through and do a, every, every single one of Edie's one-liners and just listen to them all on loop. Oh just, my god! Just, uh, Edie was a great character. Like the fact that she was coming into being sentient was just before she was even sentient. She's cracking jokes. Did you know Edie was in the first game? She was the original AI that went amok on the moon. Yeah, I didn't on know the moon, that. On the moon, yeah. Because she talks about it. She talks about it and, on Mass Effect and 3. And she wasn't an AI then. She was still a VI. Yeah, no, she's like, I was becoming she sentient was for Cerber the first time. And Cerberus yeah, came in and, and took freaking her. out. Cerberus came in, took her, and made her fully sentient. It was, I'm pretty sure what they did, what Cerberus did, was copied the code. Because yeah. you uh, still destroyed the AI, the, the, the VI on the verge you still destroy it there so they took a copy yeah. of the code and up until that point she doesn't some remember people, it. some people think that her going that the vi going rogue was cerberus figuring out that it was a really advanced prototype vi and copying the code that is what sent that vi into a frantic state yeah probably was cerberus stealing it because at that time cerberus was still black ops it's kind of kind operation of in the shadows yeah. yeah it was still a part of the alliance but it wasn't like off on its own yet no it was off on its own by then but it was no it, it was no. really laying low no cerberus oh, didn't it wasn't it wasn't until after the battle of the citadel that they kind of went rogue because cerberus was still working for humanity to an extent and so was humanity but once humanity kind of stepped on a grander scale and realized that we all need to work together and not be on our own thing cerberus was like no we're still for humanity we're number one that's what splintered them yeah and I know Cerberus was a strong backer of the uh, Terra Firma party that tries to get your vote in the first Mass Effect game. That's probably... you remember that political person on near the viewport at the Citadel for Terra Firma, and he wants Shepard's vote because humanity needs to stand on their own. I don't remember that don't point. Remember. That one might have been that like so have... obscure that I didn't even realize that it was a common point. There was no prerequisite for the quest, I don't believe, but you did have to visit the Citadel after your first mission to get it. Yeah. Before your second mission. I never got and it. I, I say first mission and second mission as the story missions as a Spectre. Like, you became a Spectre, you went out, did one mission, it didn't matter what it was, then come back. She I always gone. made sure to come back to the Citadel after everything because I loved the interaction with it interactions with conrad verner oh yeah conrad and i love that there was a bug with conrad verner in the second game that got addressed <laughs> it was hilarious there was a bug that actually caused conrad to treat shepherd as if shepherd had taken pure renegade um actions with him in the first game no matter what you transferred over, there was a bug that always had him treat you as if you had put the gun in his face and told him what it was like to be out there for real, you know, instead of just telling him go home to your wife. Oh, yeah, I know I did that because he kept showing up at odd times in Citadel and was pissing me off. My yeah, like, but away. even if you were nice to him, he had the renegade reactions in the second game. And they address that in the Legendary Remaster by adding a piece of dialogue where he apologizes for lying. If you had treated him correctly. They left the forced renegade code in there. It then had the actor come in and record another line or two to reference it. It was great. I think... Um... I think um... 
the best, let's just call it NPC character that you ever talked to. That shows up in all three and all three with games. Let's see if you can recognize this one. There's one character that shows up in all three games. Kind of like a background character. In all three games? All three games. All three games. Character shows up. Character shows up. I mean, there's a lot of characters that show up in all three games, but are we talking major character, background character? Background character. Background character. You don't have to talk to this person. Do you have to take special actions to get the character to come back in no. subsequent no. games? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. They show up. Show up. You can talk I to them. I have no or idea. Not. I have no oh, idea. You know, you know. All right. Are you ready for this one? Are you talking Gianna Parasini? Nope. Okay. Because she's in all three. Yes, but, but you have to take actions. To you have to take actions. Three. Yes, but yeah. no, 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 no. That's not it. Kalisa Bensin Al Jalani. Kalisa Bensin. <laughs> yeah. Bensin Al Jalani. Oh she, my God. She shows up in all three. You do nothing. She still shows up. Like, What's funny is if you hit her in the sec in the first game. Yeah, you get the option to swing at her in the second game, and she ducks her punch. Yeah, and then you get the option to throw a second one. Yeah, and then if you <laughs> do nothing, hilarious. if you do nothing and walk away from all three, and then you she go to the, you. and you go into the third one, <laughs> and you're like, and you're like, I've had enough of your drivel because you're spouting shit about Earth and how I'm not there fighting. Wham! And you look down at her, and you're like, should have done that the first time we met. Yeah, it does not matter, male or female. It still says that line. I'm just like. Oh my god, they really know how to hold a grudge through all three of them. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, like I, it's it's just the funniest. Like it, it the fact that she shows up and she is not necessary in the second one at all. Yeah. And she still shows up for it. You know if you say fist, he shows up in the second one, right? If you let fist go. Oh yeah, no, I did on one occasion. Yeah. And but to even let fist go, you can't bring uh uh, Gar Rex. Gar you can't. You can't bring Rex to that. Or uh, Garrus. The fix. No, you can bring Garrus. You I'm can't. You can. You can talk Garrus down. You cannot talk Rex down. Rex will execute him. Oh yeah. Because Rex is contracted by the Shadow Broker to mm -hmm. kill Fist. Garrus is just a cop that hates red tape. <laughs> yeah. He's not a bad cop. He no. just hates red no. tape. Yeah, no. He, he, he's just impatient and hates corruption and red tape that protects corruption. And that's why the best thing, the best conversation that I think you have with Garrus is when he starts talking about his family. And he talks about how he went to his dad, old time sex, like he sees that character and gives him all of the information about the Reapers, about Commander Shepard. Yeah, the, the cycles like he does, like he lays it all out. His dad agrees with him, and he's yeah. like, "Yeah, no, he sees the connections." He's like, "No, this shit is not happening on my watch. I will well, no, not." He, uh, Gareth said his father didn't see the connection. He didn't. Like he he says that if you talk to him but, while he's in the but gun he terminal, said his father trusted him enough to believe that it was real, even though he didn't see it. No, no, no. He does say it. He says that. My father, my if he father. sees the connections there, he took us straight to the Primark at that point because they were all friends. They're him all and the Primark friends. were all friends. Yeah. And they came up in the, military, the together. military together. So he oh. took it to the Primark, and that's what got Garrus the job as advisor. And there wasn't really much he could do with what he was given. He stretched it out, changed where some things were so they weren't all hit at once, and they were only known to several six certain people. That's why that, that's saying, the like, only reason Palavin didn't fall right away. The game. Like yeah, because, because, because Garrett had stockpiled and took for preparations. Yeah, yeah, he took the stockpile preparations that were already in motion and said, "Here, we're going to move a handful of these, and we're going to separate them out more, so that they're easily they're grabbable easy by the military." And yeah, by the we're going to set up a forward observation base on the moon, and yeah, and, and that's what that's what brought that forward operation base there and gave them time to get to those weapons before yeah. the Reapers actually showed up at the door and busted in. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it, he talks about that and the fact that they actually say later that his family did get out because he didn't yeah. know he didn't when know he left. When he left. And then he realized and said later, I know how you feel now, leaving Earth while it was on fire. Yeah. Well, you find out um, his sister mm -hmm. or cousin wasn't even there. I can't remember who it was, but um, they instead took the Andromeda initiative. So they weren't even it, – it's like he didn't know. I think it was. Or they just forgot and retconned it without acknowledging it. <laughs> That's yeah, probably what I, happened. But because he mentions I, his sister, I think it was his sister. Out, his sister was the Tyrion from Andromeda. Yeah. It was she. I, I can't remember she, her name. I figured if she was the Pathfinder because there was a couple of Tyrions that I remember that were big main characters. One was on the planet running the the. Black market, black market of that planet, of that planet. and then another yeah, that, one was that was her, that that was was her. her. That was okay her. Yeah, she wasn't the pathfinder yeah because i was like is she either because she could have either been the pathfinder or that turing in charge of that planet that she went to that looked a lot like earth well it, it was it wasn't it, it wasn't earth it, but it was like earth it was it was still a green planet and she was running the city yeah because if you realize that palavan wasn't exactly a green planet yeah, I mean, she was kind of the Arya Talok of the city. Yes, she was in charge of everything, and which, boggles. Which, did you did you get the secret kiss from Arya? Yes, that was okay. always the funniest thing. She's she like it is the funniest shit I've ever seen, and it looked like the most awkward moment between the two of a badass woman who decides oh hey i'm going to nuke the planet just to get back my seat to yeah a light pack on the cheek and it's just like wow and it's just like it's, yeah. like, it's like your characters she she turns the character towards her gives them a big wet smooch right on the lips and then just pushes you back sets you back and just keeps going and your character's like huh yeah Hey, <laughs> like what, just well, you, what? What makes it even better is you know who voices Arya Talok, don't you? I'm I'm really big into the voice actors, so I, I, I can name a lot of them. I have it's to talk Car Carrie Ann Moss. It's Trinity from Matrix. Really? I recognize. Yeah, that was, there's a bunch that of voices. Her. It was so weird hearing her say her first on-screen f-bomb I, I, that i know of at least i've never heard her s cuss on screen like that you know i've heard goddamn you and everything but not never fuck i've never heard the f word out of her until mass effect 2 <laughs> and it was beautiful yeah no it was like yeah, no, fuck, fuck you you <laughs> don't fuck with aria yeah no it was you know it was it i i love that moment because it yeah it, it really sets up a lot because it's like she can be kind and she's she's this badass hardcore person who yeah is all for Can't the planet show that she yeah. actually does care about that place she has she has a kinder America. side and the only and the funny thing is they're the only two there no one else is there yeah it is so damn funny like, yeah. that is that is perfect